Thanks for logging on to Wayne.com where, yes, we've got one team going to state. It looked like eh, maybe it wasn't going to happen earlier in the year, but the Saints are marching into Lucas Oil Stadium. On That's Saturday. very good. There you go. Uh, oh, yes, I want to be in that number, that number being number one, mm -hmm. as they are facing a really, really good Columbus East team that hasn't lost this year and actually hasn't been challenged at all this year. Uh, Tom Davis is always joining us. And, Tom, talk a little bit about uh, your first impressions after the win on Friday night for Bishop Blanger, knowing, all right, they're in the state championship game, and now they've got to play their toughest game of the season and play their best game of the season this coming Saturday. Well, it's really fascinating to watch Bishop Dwinger because who in the world thought Bishop Dwinger coming off uh, sub-500 season, first time since 2000 last year. Uh, they're 13-12 and 12 over the last two years. They don't really have a superstar. They just have a lot of really good players. Uh, who in the world thought this was going to happen? I mean, I, I could have a month ago given you maybe four or five teams that I thought had a legitimate chance to get here. I'm not sure Dwinger would have been on that group or in that group, but here they are, and kudos to them. Absolutely dominated East Chicago Central. Uh, it was really a, an interesting matchup between an established program like Bishop Dwinger and an up-and-coming program like East Chicago Central, but there was no doubt in that game who the better team was. Bishop Dwinger uh, dominated, and again, their defense, uh, you know, we can talk about Ryan Watercutter, Mike Fee Cable, and Espinosa, Tidman, you know, all, Sinodar, all those guys, but it's the defense of Bishop Dwinger that carries them to the semi-state victory. That's a fun, it's funny that you mentioned how inexperienced ECC looked on Friday at this level. It, it looked like they were in shock. They didn't right. know what to make of it. Kind of the same scenario in many ways this coming Saturday. If you throw out our homerisms and everything that we like about Bishop Dwenger on paper, this looks like a Columbus East victory. No, it doesn't. But, but, <laughs> but, Dwenger's used to playing on the big yeah. stage. Ninth time that they've been there. They've won it three times. They were there back in 2010 when they lost to Cathedral. Roman Wright, Patrick Ryan, uh, Tony Spring Springman, Steven Espinoza. I'm forgetting a lot of guys. They've been here. Yes. Columbus East has been here once, 1979, 79. the year I was born, 34 years ago. So they don't have a lot of experience. And how does that play in the favor of Dwinger? It plays a big part in the favor of Dwinger. I like Bishop Dwinger in this matchup. The more that I did the research uh, prior to this uh, taping, the more I really like Bishop Dwinger. I don't care who's 14-0. and 0. I don't care who's ranked number one in the state. Bishop Dwinger is the established program that's been here before, like you said. And here's the thing. Columbus East uh, under Bob Gaddis, great coach, 35 years uh, as a head coach uh, of high school football. Uh, they've played parochial schools five times in the semi-state since 2004. 0-5, baby. 0-5. Bishop Dwinger can get this done. They have a balanced offense. Columbus East really doesn't. Columbus East has an efficient quarterback thrown for 1,200 yards, 62% uh, pass completion percentage. But really what they want to do, they want to do one thing and one thing only, and that's hand the ball off to Markel Jones. Bishop Dwinger's defense is good at taking away what you do best. They they took away Arias Vasquez for 29 of his 31 carries. Except for one carry. Yeah. Uh, they took away Brandon Mabel. They've stopped running games before. I like Bishop Dwinger's defense. I'm not saying that they're going to hold Markel Jones to 27 yards. I'm not being goofy. Um, he'll get his yards, but he's not going to dominate this game. They're not going to run the ball and manage the clock. Bishop Dwinger's going to be able to force some turnovers because they're going to force Columbus East to pass more than they want to. I like Bishop Dwinger in this game, and I'm not being a homer. I'm telling you, that's how I feel. All right. Well, you mentioned Markel Jones, which is uh... – it's funny that there's such a run-first offense in Columbus East because a couple years ago they had the number one quarterback in the country coming out, yeah. Gunnar Keel. Notre Dame fans know all about him and his commitment and his flip-flop, and now he's at the so University. Some LSU fans and Cincinnati they, fans and Les Boston Miles, fans. Les Miles is not a huge Columbus East fan, yeah. let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, he's at the University of Cincinnati now, but he was a pro-style quarterback coming out, the right. best in the country. So you figured they'd throw the ball, but they've really adapted to what they have, and what they have in Mark L. Jones is a guy – Who's, re who's considered one of the best players in the state for the class of 2015. Over 2,400 yards rushing, 40 touchdowns from that yeah. running back position. He's really good. He's already got a scholarship offer from Toledo. Ball State's looking at him. IU's looking at him. A number of other MAC schools are looking at him. Really good running back, obviously. And that starts with a really experienced and good offensive line as well. 
Um, you know, we talk about Bishop Dwinger's offensive lines undersized, but they kind of overachieve. They've overperformed this year. Columbus East has a good offensive line, and they tend to dominate their opponents. Here's a big, a big factor. I mean, we've mentioned some other factors. Columbus East doesn't play the competition Bishop Doinger does. I mean, Bishop Doinger has prepped here against Concordia, Wayne, Northside, Snyder, uh, East Noble, New Haven. And they've gone outside and played Cathedral and Cincinnati LaSalle. Bishop Dwinger has seen teams as good as Columbus East. Columbus East has not seen teams as good as Bishop Dwinger. Now, the, their last two opponents mm -hmm. have combined for 24 wins. So as they, Columbus East, the Olympians have gotten deeper in the tournament. They face tougher competition. But week in and week out, Bishop Dwinger challenges themselves against the best. That's not something that Columbus East has been able to do down in southern Indiana. That plays a huge factor in this game. Bishop Dwinger's defense, they'll do a good job of containing the outside edges and, and not letting Jones get on, on the edge. Uh, they'll force him back into the middle where they can gain tackle. They fundamentally tackle well. They, they somewhat contain Markel Jones and force Columbus East to pass more than what they want to do this week. Yeah, Columbus East, you mentioned they haven't played the competition, but they also haven't played down to the competition. They have right. not had a game in which they haven't won by three scores, uh, three touchdowns, I should say, uh, and that includes last week's win, 49-14, against the number two previously undefeated team in the state uh, in New Palestine. So there's a little bit of sticker shock, I think, when you look at the numbers. Columbus East, 52 yeah, points a game. Is. They're giving up only 11. If you're Chris Schwartzkopf and Coach Watercutter and the rest of that coaching staff at Bishop Dwanger, what do you focus on this week to say, or do you have to mention how good their offense is when you're prepping? The numbers maybe speak for themselves. Well, no, I think they'll they'll treat Columbus East with respect, which they should. I mean, they're ranked number one for a reason, and they're undefeated for a reason. And like you said, they do blow out everybody that they've played. But having said that, they also temper that with, look, guys, look what we've done. Look what we're capable of doing. And uh, look at the teams we've beaten. I mean, we've gone on the road and beaten Cincinnati LaSalle. So, you know, Bishop Dwinger, although they will respect Columbus East, they'll be fully cognizant of everything they can do, and they can do some things. Uh, they're also not going to be shocked by it. They're not going to be awed by it. And so uh, I, I just think Bishop Dwinger, the tradition of the program, the experience of these kids, and these kids, I mean, you can say, well, the past teams have gone to the state championship, but these kids have gone on the road and played the cathedrals in Cincinnati LaSalle's over the course of their career. And these kids have challenged themselves against the best teams in the state. So these kids will not be uh, intimidated by Columbus East in any way, shape, or form. And it's funny that you mentioned the tradition because last week, uh, preparing for the ECC game, as we mentioned, ECC hadn't been to that level before. In talking to Coach Schwarzkopf and in talking to the players of practice, that's one of the things they downplayed. I was like, you know, you guys, you guys are used to being here. How right. much level of comfort is it? And they totally downplayed it because these guys in 2010, you're talking about they're freshmen at that right. time. And you got to be a pretty special freshman to play at Bishop Dwanger, considering right. the number of names that we rattled off earlier. Um, but is, is that good coaching? Is that setting up the mindset to be successful, saying, you know what, all that stuff is in the past, all we can really focus on is, uh, is this game in the future? Well, I think you can use the past as a confidence builder. I mean, when they go down and they do their practice at Lucas Oil Stadium, it's going to be kind of cool. I mean, Columbus East kids are going to be like, wow, this is our first time here. Dwinger kids have grown up at least going and watching mm -hmm. Dwinger teams play at Lucas Oil Stadium. So it's, not, it's going to be more of an opportunity like, hey, this is our chance uh, to shine like Eifert and Springman and Goodman. Some of those guys got their chance. This is our chance to take advantage of that. Columbus East is kind of going to be like, wow, I can't believe we're here when they first walk mm -hmm. in and they see that massive stadium. So I think Dwinger's tradition, although John Goodman won't help them win on Saturday at 3.30, but the fact that that tradition of that program builds confidence in these kids that they believe there's something special about Dwinger football, which there is, and that will play a factor at 3.30 on Saturday once the ball gets kicked off. And, you know, another thing, Bishop Dwinger has not only been in close games, they've been down. They've been mm -hmm. down with two minutes to go against Snyder. And so they know how to handle adversity. What happens in the third quarter when Bishop Dwinger's up 10 points on Columbus East? How do those Olympian players react to that? That'll be telling. And I'll play devil's advocate on that side because 
You mentioned the past three games have been the best three teams that they've played in the playoffs. Uh, they pounced on East Noble. They were up 17 to zip in the first quarter. Uh, other than that, Vasquez touchdown, they dominated the first half yeah. against New Haven to be up 28 to 7. And then last week, 31 to 0 at halftime. The game was over right. at halftime last week against ECC. You could tell slump shoulders. It wasn't, a comeback wasn't going to happen. So they really haven't been tested in the second half in the postseason recently. Right. Uh, like we've seen. Um, but they were tested yeah, all season. I was going to say, if that concerns you at all, does it? No, none whatsoever. They were tested all season. I mean, they were tested when they were down against Northside, the best team in the SAC, you know, the SAC champion. <sighs> they're down against Snyder. They're down against Cincinnati LaSalle. They're down against Cathedral. And here's how Dwinger kids respond. They're up 31 nothing at halftime on East Chicago Central. If anybody can go on cruise control at that point, it would be Bishop Dwinger. And they don't. They intercept the ball four times in the third quarter. So they come out with a 31 nothing lead, and they don't relent. They continue to play hard. They continue to battle. They got four of their six interceptions. That's not a... I don't want to say typo, a misstatement. <laughs> uh, six interceptions in the third quarter. They continued to play hard all the way to the finish. My question is, we've talked a lot about the defense, and the defense has only given up 30 points in five games in the playoffs for Bishop Dwinger combined. Can the offense score enough to get them the victory? Because Columbus East, if they have it their way, they want to shoot out. But they've only given up 11.1 points per game during the season. We mentioned the competition level, not where Dwinger has played. But Mike Fia Cable, Ryan Watercutter, Gabriel Espinoza, Tyler Tipman, Ryan Sonata, all those guys, Nathan Neese up front, can they get it done against this Columbus East defense? And what has made Columbus East tough defensively? How does Snyder get over that? Well, what's made Columbus East tough defensively is they're better than the competition that they play, which isn't the comp, like I mentioned, isn't comparable to what Bishop Dwinger's played. But to your point, okay, can Bishop Dwinger score enough against Columbus East? Okay, Columbus East, who are you going to shut down? You're going to shut down Mike Fia Cable? Fine, Ryan Watercutter will beat you with a punt return. That's what he did to East Chicago Central. You know, they have a good field goal kicker. Uh, like you mentioned, all their running backs. You're going to take Tyler Tipman away? Fine, we'll hand off to Ryan Sinodar. You know, we'll throw to Gabriel Espinosa. Who are you going to shut down, really? We, we got six different weapons here. We, we don't have one guy. We don't have two guys. And I say we like I'm on <laughs> Bishop doing your sideline. You're, Tra Saints. You're Trey Casabro's <laughs> personal placeholder. That's right. Uh, go Saints. But, uh, no, Bishop Dwinger is so versatile in their attack, whether they run, they pass. I mean, w would it shock you uh, this Saturday if they ran for more yards than they passed? Probably not. What if they pass for more yards than they ran? Would that shock you? It wouldn't shock me. They take what's given, and they do the best with what they do. Bingo. And so that's what makes Bishop Dwinger so good. They're so versatile. You can't stop their entire attack. You take Markel Jones away from Columbus East, betcha Dwinger wins easily. But they're not going to take him completely away, but they are going to control him. Yeah, and talking to many coaches in the last few seasons about playing Bishop Dwinger, they say, you know, you don't stop the veer, you don't stop anything. And it's a unique Offensively, you put a lot of effort in that, but Mike Fia Cable can throw it too, yes, and he that can. is what makes them dangerous. All right, final prediction for Saturday, 3:30, as Dwinger takes on Columbus East. I know you like the Saints to win this one. I do. I like the Saints, 33 to 27. I like Trey Castleboro kicking a field goal with no time remaining to give Dwinger the win. Hey, I, I'll take that too. That would be the perfect. It would be free costs for everybody, and uh, <laughs> it would be great for the whole entire city of Fort Wayne. Yeah.